Portland Harbour and ships of the home fleet make ready for an autumn cruise to the West Indies. Viscount Hall, First Lord of the Admiralty, arrives aboard the battleship Duke of York and is soon chatting with the Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Sir Roderick McGregor. <music> Meanwhile, in every other warship, final preparations are made for this, the Royal Navy's biggest exercise since the war. Soon, following the signal from the flagship, the destroyer escorts in line ahead leave the harbour. Three aircraft carriers, Illustrious, Theseus and Vengeance, were to play a major part in the operation. And now the flagship herself, the 35,000 ton Duke of York. With the fleet heading down channel, zero hour was not far ahead. Naval units and aircraft of an imaginary enemy blue force were to carry out an attack to test the defense equipment of the fleet. And here, racing to the scene of the mock battle, are some of Blue Force MTBs, the little ships that played so great a part in wartime operations in the Channel and the North Sea. Battle was joined for the destroyers on the alert for submarine attacks. The fleet is reported to have stood up well to this first big test, in which, of course, the aircraft carriers were among the primary targets. For every crew, the manoeuvres are forming the most valuable training since the recent strengthening of the Navy came into force. From the Channel, the home fleet moves on into the Atlantic and sets course for the next rendezvous. In these times of doubt and fear, the Royal Navy is quietly, efficiently and speedily fitting itself for its traditional task.